So what is a guitar capo anyways? Well, essentially what it is, is an instrument that allows you to move the position of the nut up the fretboard, hence raising the pitch of the notes. For example, if I play a piece like that in standard tuning, and I want to raise the pitch of that piece, I merely put on a capo on whatever fret I feel like putting it on and I can play the same piece exactly the same way. This is a very very helpful tool for all guitarists and especially guitarists who are singers and find that they are working on a song and open tuning Perhaps their vocal range can't quite reach the notes that they want. They can always stick a capo on and move the position up the guitar and find a comfortable position where you can sing that song and play those same notes without having to change anything in re with regards to your fingering. So it allows for open tunings to be used right up the fretboard. It's a very, very useful tool. And there are all types of different capos out there, and we're going to take a look at a bunch of them, and I will give you some recommendations of which ones I think are very useful and good. So here's a bunch of capos that I have uh, in my own collection, um, and I'm going to take a look at each one of these, break them down, talk about their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the first group of capos here, these three that you see, are what I call clamp-on capos. And as you can see, the idea between them is to be able to clamp on to the guitar fret. And they work very quickly and are very convenient, and, but they don't necessarily last all that long. Uh, this next group of capos here are what I would call adjustable tension capos where there's usually some sort of screw mechanism that allows you to adjust the tension so you can get it just the way you like. This is a spider capo here that uh, allows the guitarist to choose which strings he wishes to hold down with these individual uh, little mini capos. And then this is kind of cheap capos here. I wouldn't really kind of, uh, bother with those too much. Okay. So the most important thing when applying a capo to your guitar for the first time is to understand that it's much like when you're fingering a guitar. When you hold down a guitar and you want to do a bar, for instance, say with your index finger, you don't hold the bar halfway on the fret or towards the lower fret. You're holding it right on the fret as close as possible and that way all the guitar strings ring out and resonate nicely. So the same applies to a capo. When you put it on, you want to make sure that you put it on straight. So make sure that you're looking at the guitar, that you've got a good view, that you're looking perhaps down right on the fret. And then when you apply it, make sure that you're going just right above the fret there and that you apply it with an even pressure. Get it on there and then check it out. And every note should ring clearly like that. There should be no muddled notes. Then when you've got it like that, you know that it's good and set to go. So the first capo that we're going to look at here is the Dunlop Trigger Capo. As you see, it fits, can go nicely on your headstock. You've got these two ends that you pinch together in order to release the tension. You hold that wide open and then place it on your guitar. Make sure it's just right. So this is a nice capo, 
it's got a very very strong tension to it so that might deter some people um, out of the clamp-on capos that I have I would say this tension is probably the strongest um, it seems very well built though as you see you have rubber padding here and on the base part that connects with the neck and even here on this side part so your guitar won't get damaged um, but it is does put a lot of pressure on the neck and some people might be a little bit wary of it but this is a solid clamp-on capo and uh, Dunlop is a company with a good reputation and make a lot of great little guitar pieces so now we'll go on to the next one here which is the Nashville G7th capo and this capo um, has a spring here that uh, provides the tension as you pull back you release that tension and then you put it on this is a good quick capo it doesn't have the same level of tension that the Dunlop has um, and but it it works really well I like the way that when you're playing it there's not a lot of obstruction for your hand either underneath or up here um, the mechanism for it is all on the side and that's where your hand doesn't usually go maybe your thumb might hit it but uh, otherwise this capo is nicely designed I've had it for about four years it's lost some of its tension as all these types do in time but this is a solid capo and would be my choice for the clamp-on type capos and as you can see it goes on nicely here onto the head and finally we are going to look at this Kaiser capo now I can't put this Kaiser capo on my guitar I'm not sure if you can see it well enough there but it is crooked here and that's because the axle is broken on this part of the Kaiser capo and the Kaiser is very similar to the other two in that it has this sort of spring mechanism that uh, acts the tension the problem with the Kaiser I've had two of these and both of the axles here have broken on both capos so I can recommend this capo it's very popular a lot of people like it but uh, as far as a long-term solution um, I would not recommend this capo I would sooner recommend the Nashville capo from G7 or the Dunlop trigger capo if you want a trigger capo that has a softer sort of tension on it then go with this one if you want a real solid tension go with the Dunlop trigger capo so this next group of capos that we're going to look at um, are the ones with the adjustable tension uh, this is the Shub uh, capo is actually made for a 12 string but uh, I've used it several times for 6 string it's a really nice capo well built solid got a kind of a metal frame to it and nice thick rubber I'm sure these can be replaced but uh, haven't had any need for that um, and it just goes on simple you have a an adjustable little screw here that uh, you can adjust if it doesn't fit on properly once you put it on it clamps down a really solid capo very well built not all that expensive they have a good reputation it's a good capo that's the shub capo next one here this is the Ned Stein NS capo from Planet Waves. It uh, is a very affordable capo. Has a really smart design here with this adjustable tension here. This wheel that you turn um, works very well. Inexpensive, smart design, and you can adjust the tension. It's always good when you have a capo that you can adjust tension with, just in case.
take it off, you just unscrew it, easy as pie. This is the NS Lite, it's the sister version, if you will, of the NS Capo. The uh, frame of it, instead of being metallic, is actually plastic. Um, this is a great little pocket capo. Put it on, same idea. The screw nice so you get the tension just the way you like it. So a nice, cheap, affordable capo. Definitely check those out. Finally, this one here is called the Page Click Capo. This is one of my newest capos. Um, it's different than the other ones in the way that it wraps around the guitar. Um, it's fairly unobtrusive, so it's a, this is a nice capo. I'll show you how it goes on, like so. You just clip that underneath, and then you've got the thing here, the screw here to adjust the tension. And as I said, adjustable tension on capos is always very nice because uh, it gives you the option fine-tuning things just to get it just right. And another cool thing about this capo, as you can see here, oh, underneath, there's a little button that you can push. Hard to get this in the screen, but uh, and that releases the tension, allows you to move the capo up and down the fretboard, screw it back in, and there you go. Oh, this came out of here. There you go. Set up again now on the fifth fret. And this capo can also uh, can also you put here when when not in use, right up above the nut. Just tighten it on, and there you go. And the guitar is no one, no worse the wear. You've got it there. So that's it for the adjustable tension ones. Now we'll look at a couple other. Here we have the G7 Performance Capo. Um, this is a really kind of neat looking capo. It's uh, got a somewhat of an aerodynamic design, kind of like a European sports car. Um, and the idea of this capo is that you put it on the guitar and then you squeeze with your hand and it locks into place. The more you squeeze, the tighter it'll get and it will not, that tension will not lessen. There's also a release right here, this little trigger, push down and the guitar capo opens up. So I'll put it on here. And you squeeze it. You only need one hand really to do it. So this is a, a nice capo. It's a uh, somewhat more expensive than the others. I would say one major uh, complaint that I would have about this particular capo is the weight. It's by far the heaviest of all my capos. So uh, I would say if this capo they could maybe half or a quarter of the weight it would be a really really wonderful capo. But it still is it's very solid. It's just it's going to put extra weight on your neck and sometimes that can be a little bit uh, of a nuisance uh, causing your neck when you're not having your hands on it to move around. Um, you know, if you're like me, you're kind of picky. You prefer to have a lighter capo, but this is a good solid capo. You can't really go wrong. The next capo we got here is the spider capo. Um, it looks like some sort of medieval torture device, but uh, it actually works. The idea is that it clamps on the guitar and then you have these little plastic switches here that will push down on each string individually and then you can set it for whatever you want if you if you only want to have one or two strings 
capoed, you have that option, um, which makes it very interesting. There's a lot of cool things that you can do. I'll try capoing the last two strings here. So you can really do a lot of cool things with this capo. Through the, you could use it, I guess, as a normal capo if you were to push them all down. But uh, and it also allows you to play up here if you've got open if you've got open uh, spaces on the capo, you can go up high. I don't use this capo very much at all. I've in fact uh, rarely used it, so I can't give an honest assessment of it. But I think it's a very interesting capo, and uh, I think uh, creative people could find a lot of different uses for it. And there are other reviews up here on YouTube uh, for this capo, and I. I suggest if you're interested in it, you check out them because they, they have more experience than me with it. But uh, it's a cool capo. I like it. Okay, so this capo here that we're looking at now is not a good capo. This is the Planet Waves Ratchet capo. And the idea of this capo is that it you wrap it around the guitar and then close the latch here and it's these little plastic teeth that uh, grip and there's a little trigger here that you can push on to release uh, you push down I guess it is really a not a good capo it doesn't work well uh, see I can't even open it oh there you go okay so I'll try putting it on here and it'll work when you put it on buzzing there right there and I can't even seem to get that any tighter so it's uh, not a good capo um, I definitely can't recommend it I got it as a freebie it's a junkie capo and uh, that's all I can say okay so the things to consider when you're purchasing a capo is what type of guitar you have, if it's a 12 string, if it's a you know, classical guitar, it might be an 8 or 7 string electrical guitar. You want to check those things out, make sure that the capo that you're going to buy will work on whatever guitar you intend to work it on. I use different capos for different guitars, uh, sometimes certain capos don't work well whereas others will excel. Uh, as far as pricing goes, I believe the G7 Nashville capo is around $30 and uh, I think you can probably get a few years at least out of it. It's a good quick uh, capo. Probably my favorite of the clamp-on type. Um, the Dunlop trigger capo is from anywhere from $15 to $25. Um, I haven't had much experience with this. It's very, very solid grip on it. And, uh, you know, that might deter some people and that might turn some people on. Um, it's one of these capos that you can really quickly clamp on your headstock. So it's very convenient, just like the National. As I said, the Kaiser capo, I won't recommend this capo. Um, a lot of people like them though, so, you know, try to get other opinions, but uh, I've had two break on me, so I cannot endorse that one. Um, probably the all-around best capo, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, would be the Ned Stein capo, the regular pro version, as they call it. Um, I think they're about $15, 15 to $20, maybe even less. Uh, it's a great pocket capo. It's a smart design, solid. Uh, I like this capo. It's not the best capo in the world, but it's a hell of a good portable little capo. If you are really looking for a capo that's good for adjusting tension on the neck, I would say the page capo is really good for that. Um, I like it that it's in the center where 
the tension is, is applied. As you see that little part goes up when you screw it. That's nice because it gives an even tension on the guitar rather than some of the other clamp-on types that might tend to pull strings sometimes. If you put them on really well, they're, 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 they're good, but if you're doing it quickly, sometimes you can find that it'll put strings out of tune and you know you don't want that to happen. So that's a really good solid capo for those who like to have real good control over the tension. As I said about the G7, great little capo, kind of expensive though. This one is uh, 40 to 50 dollars and it's very heavy. Uh, whereas the Page capo is about 30, 35 dollars maybe. It's good value. There's, incidentally, there's uh, uh, the Elliott capo, which would be a step up, a major step up from this. Um, uh, they're handmade in the United States, and uh, I've heard nothing but good things about those capos. So, if you're a serious musician, you might want to invest in one of those. I don't have one yet, but uh, I'll definitely look into it in the future. So there you have it. I hope I helped you make a good decision on a capo. And there are many other videos here on YouTube to check out for capos. I suggest you watch a few of them and make your decision. I wish you all the best.